Welcome. So this question says a six kilogram block slides across a smooth level surface with a constant speed of nine meters per second. It slides into a rough part of the surface and comes to rest after moving 12 meters through the snow. Uh, what is the magnitude of the force of friction? So let's draw it. We have a nice smooth bit ice, for example. And then we have the rough bit snow, for example. If I draw a picture of the smooth bit, I have six kilograms, and this is going at nine meters per second. And then it hits onto the snow, and friction, there's going to be a frictional force, FF, and the velocity is going to equal zero meters per second once I've traveled 12 meters. So there's my kind of visualization of the situation. And I want to know the size of this frictional force. Uh, it's a, a non-isolated system. There's a mechanism by which energy can, in this case, leave the system. And that is friction changes some of the mechanical energy into heat. And it's lost to the mechanical. Uh, energy. So what we say is that our mechanical energy, let's call this a, the start, mechanical energy at the start, and then we say plus the negative work done by friction. We know it's going to be a negative work because the displacement is going to be to the right and the frictional force is going to be to the left. That's the negative work. That's taking energy out of the system. Must equal the mechanical energy. Let's call this the end. At the end. Okay. Well, we have no hills, no ups or downs, so we don't need to worry about the gravitational potential energy. There's no springs anywhere, so we don't need to worry about spring potential energy. We're just working with kinetic energy here. So I can say one half times m times v at the start squared plus minus ff times d is equal to one half times m times v at the end squared. So let's put some numbers in. One half times six times nine squared plus minus FF times, and this is going to be plus 12, it's pointing to the right, is equal to, well, this is going to be zero because my final velocity is zero. So well, that means that rearranging FF is equal to one half times six times nine squared all divided by 12, which equals basically nine nines are 81, uh, 12 into six goes. Uh, two times another half. So that's going to be 81 over 4. So FF is equal to 20.25 newtons. It's pointing to the left. And the reason why I'm getting a positive number here is because I took into account that direction when I put the negative sign in. If I'd pretended I didn't know it was pointing to the left, and I'd call this a positive force, then I would have had a negative number here, and that would have said, oh, because you have a negative number, it's pointing to the left. Because I knew it was pointing to the left and put the negative sign into my equation, I get a positive number for my FF. And 20.25 is there. And there we have it. Good diagram. Uh, clear thinking about 
my mechanical energy at the start plus the negative work done by friction is equal to the mechanical energy at the end and then just let your numbers follow through. There we have it.